you are looking live at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, the home of champions. But in Huskerland, the natives are restless. Last week, lowly Kansas pushed Nebraska to the wall. Bobby Newcomb saved the day with two electrifying touchdowns and maybe the Nebraska season. Today, Texas A&M challenges Nebraska. A year ago, the Aggies pounded the Huskers at home. Two seasons hanging the balance today in Lincoln. On an upset Saturday, here come the Cornhuskers. Minnesota gives Nebraska fresh hope in the bowl championship series run. Penn State has been beaten today, 24-23, and now Nebraska hosts Texas A&M. The standings of the Big 12 in the north. The stretch is underway now for the Huskers. Today, it's Texas A&M. Next Saturday, Kansas State. Then on Thanksgiving weekend, off to Boulder in Colorado. Texas A&M can win the South, but they must have help. Good afternoon and welcome, everybody. With my partner, Gary Danielson, I'm Brett Musburger. What excitement now when the crowd heard about the final score at Happy Valley. Penn State has lost 24-23, but this is not going to be easy for Nebraska. This Texas A&M defense is pretty good here, Gary. Brent, they, they call them the wrecking crew defense for A&M, and they did that last year to this offense, forcing Nebraska into a shotgun offense for practically the home game. But that was a reason for that. They had two 100-yard rushers. I don't think this year's team is built that way. They're going to have to have some pass to win. Gary, help me out with Nebraska. I don't recognize this team. Where are we? We're going to talk wide receivers. Has that ever been done here? Matt Davison and Bobby Newcomb have changed this offense you're going to see the pass you're going to see him on the field all day and Bobby Newcomb is the guy he's going to change this Nebraska offense forever because you have to get him the ball he's a game breaker well as you pointed out Gary every eight times that he touches the ball Newcomb scores a touchdown how many today we'll find out in a moment score has been put up on the board here the Memorial Stadium has gone wild it's been very loud how about for the Texas A&M team, Coach? What is the noise going to do to your team? Well, we, we're used to playing in big ball games and noise. That's part of football. That's an exciting atmosphere to play in. We won't worry about the noise. We'll worry about those guys out there on the field. Good luck today. Thank you. Brent? Thank you very much, Jack Harut. Folks, it's November in Lincoln, and it is beautiful. One of the nicest November Saturdays I've ever experienced here. Stella on the right, Walker on the left. Texas A&M winning the flip, and they have elected to take the ball to start the second half. And there, our weather and forecast clear and sunny. So if you want a winter vacation, drop on by Lincoln, Nebraska. Shane Leckler. With the ball on the tee, underway in Lincoln. Here's Walker from the two-yard line. Down at about the 17-yard line. Turner Gill, the quarterback coach here at Nebraska, and we asked Turner, what does the offense have to do early to be successful against a and we got to get them off balance. Uh, they're quick and they're fast. That's probably their strength of their defense aspect of it. We're going to have to run it at them a little bit, and we want to mix up some play action passes early and get them off balance, and then we can attack them, uh, running at them pretty hard as the game goes along. And the ringleader is Eric Crouch. They will open with Newcomb on the wing and no eye back. They have Willie Miller, number 15. Newcomb in motion. Here's the option. Newcomb got the pitch. Fumble! Aggies! Aggies pounce on it near the 10-yard line. A turnover, a devastating turnover on the first play. Brent, the Nebraska offense has been plagued with turnovers the last three football games. This is one of those Bobby plays. Get it to Bobby Newcomb. A good, good pitch. He's got it right there. Has it in both hands, running with the football. And that's an unforced error that can take your own crowd out of the football game and give another team a chance to beat you. Look at that. Perfect until he dropped the ball. Harold Roberts.
reports it. Recovers the fumble. Eric Bernard, number three, is behind number 15, Randy McCown on first down. Oh. Fumble back. Oh. Loose ball again. McCown diving on it, and I believe the ref is signaling. Now Nebraska saying that they took it away down at the bottom of the pile, so hold on. The referee, and that is Randy Crystal. He quickly held up two fingers for second down. Brent, I think Randy McCown had this ball when he first dropped on it. Stretch play, just does not get the handoff. It's on his hip. McCown gets it, and then Nebraska fights away from him and gets it away. But usually the referee gives it to the first guy that touches the ball. Tiki Hardeman, the lone running back for the Aggies. All blitz look, no free safety. Hardeman. Pound spins away from the first hit to the eight-yard line. They're chilly starting lineup. It is fast and furious in Lincoln. <laughs> Hi, Muley, out of Euless, Texas. Their best offensive lineman for the Aggies. Lots of talented wide receivers. Chris Taylor wearing number seven this year from Madisonville, Texas. In that backfield, number five, Jamar Toombs. He pounded them last year. Bernard. In a passing situation for the Aggies. Good receiver lined up behind McCown. Straight back goes in zone. Incomplete over through Cole on the play. The Nebraska defense today. Steve Warren, the best out of Springfield, Missouri, anchors the defensive line for the Cornhuskers. Carlos Pope, they say he is near 100% physically out of Rockford, Illinois. And Mike Brown from Scottsdale, Arizona, leads this team with 59 tackles. And Nebraska defense answered the call right there. That was one of those sudden changes. And as a defensive team, you answer, and it shifts the momentum back your way. Terrence Kitchens, 29-yard attempt. He had a 63-yarder. And the Huskers pour in on him. He's had trouble getting it off as Kyle Vandenbosch blocks the punt. Number 83, Kyle Vandenbosch with a great play. Way. We've had a fumble and a turnover by Nebraska. We've had a blocked field goal against the Aggies. Two fine plays. There's the young man who blocked the field goal. And Eric Crouch from Omaha Millard North leads the Huskers out, hoping to have much better success with this play. Can't be any worse. No, turned <laughs> it over. Newcomb, the wing around. They'll line up two wing backs. Miller, and here comes Newcomb again, and Miller, the fullback. Battles his way to the 24 yard line. One more look at the block. Vandenbosch comes right up the middle. Vandenbosch goes about 6 4. And you know, Brent, Charlie McBride told us he's finally healthy. Had a leg injury, and you can see right there as he jumps, Kitchens might have kicked it low. He's had five blocks this year. That's his sixth. And Nebraska comes right up the gut. There it is. Six field goals blocked in the year. That was a tough one for him right there, that close to the field. Freshman receiver Wilson Thomas joins Matt Davidson as the wideouts. Miller again near the 30 yard line in our Chili's starting lineup for the Cornhusker offense today. Russ Hochstein has been their best offensive lineman this year. Wide receivers, Gary told you they've opened it up. Matt Davidson in for every offensive snap last week against Kansas. Danny Alexander will play both eye back and fullback. Interestingly enough, the Huskers open today without an eye back as they use the fullback, Willie Miller. Brent also, Nebraska going with two wing backs in here tight. Crouch, step for the first down. Crouch stopped by Cornelius Anthony. First down, Nebraska. Dominic Rayola anchors the offensive line. For Nebraska, Sherman and Hochstein, the guards we saw in that graphic, but where they have tack tackle problems is with number 69, Adam Jolts, who is not 100% physically. So their coach is upstairs keeping a very close eye on the left tackle, who you watch sit down. There goes Nukem the other way off the wing, and Miller using sort of a belly attack here in the early game. Completely going. different look by Nebraska early in this game. Ronnie Edwards anchors that nose guard position for the Aggies here today. The linebackers are always active for the wrecking crew. Brian Gamble hoping to replace that win before his career is over. And Jason Webster out of Houston with four interceptions. 
leads Texas A&M in that category. Dan Alexander now in at eye back. And they break out of that two wing look. Running the option, here comes, and he's run out of bounds. That's that speed from that wrecking crew defense. Let's look at what Nebraska has to do, the Dell Game Solutions right here. Nebraska, we talked about in the open. You got a good receiver, Davidson, who can keep your weapons on your field. Those are the ball players. Ball security, how about that? Gee, that one already went down right there real quick in the game. Hold on to the ball, three key T overs. AM, read your keys. Nebraska wants to use that play action pass to beat you. And finally, ignore Danielson and that wide receiver hype. Stop the option. That's how you beat this Nebraska football team. Now on third and seven, Tracy Wistrom checks in. He's a downfield tight end, if you will, averaging better than 33 yards a catch this year. Crouch rolls, gonna pitch back to Newcomb on that little lateral shovel pass. First down, Nebraska on third and seven. A good call from the coaches. Frank Solich told us yesterday, he calls them the Bobby package. We saw it on first down. This is a whole different look with Bobby Newcomb going into the wingback spot, almost like Johnny Rogers, a la Johnny. This is the pass, the shovel pass, crouch out wide. Give the ball to your playmakers. That's what I think Bobby Newcomb's going to go to do this offense the rest of this year and into this 2000 season. Ball on the Nebraska 41 yard line. Wistrom in motion. H back look. Crouch rolls left. Fires. Hits Galladay. And Galladay to the 35 yard line of the Aggies for 23 yards on the pass from sophomore Eric Crouch. Well, Eric Crouch is not getting the option given to him. You see that wrecking crew for AM defense is going to play wide. They think they have the speed to really counter that option play. So you counter that by running a little misdirection, as Turner Gill said. Get the ball to your tight ends, a little bit of pitch wing back, and try to keep this defense off balance and guessing. Matt Davison off to the top in the sunlight, the right of quarterback Crouch. Wisdom steps over to the right side of the formation, and they come back with Alexander. Alexander inside the 30-yard line before Rocky Bernard brings him down. The matchup, Gary. Yeah, let's take a look at this football game. Who, who's the edge on offense? I'm going to give Nebraska the edge, but a small X. Very slight edge. Defense, hey, AM gave up 51 points. Good defense, but a small edge to Nebraska. Here's where the game's going to turn. Special teams, a big X is available. Both teams can do it with returns and great kicking game for AM. The intangibles, I was ready to go one way, but I think Nebraska has the intangible now, Brent, with that big upset of Penn State. Very good point. Alexander cuts back close to a first down. Really has turned on the crowd, I think, in this football game. You have to believe if you're Nebraska, you feel you're back into the picture. At least you have some life. Inside running game, that offensive line has been questioned. People say it's not quite as good. I'm sure Frank Solich has challenged these guys and said, we have to make the ball go between the tackles. They don't have great speed at tailback, so they need to run the ball up the gut with their tailback. Tenth play of the drive, third short, and Crouch picks up another first down for the Cornhuskers. Well, the young man has rushed for 399 yards for a 4.2 average, but a couple weeks ago against Texas, he was playing catch up down the stretch. So he was throwing the ball more than he was running. Yep. And you know, this is a, almost unlike Nebraska that I can ever remember. For the year, this Nebraska team is only converting 35% of their third down conversions. That's not like Nebraska. And the reason is they're getting behind on first and second down. Too much yardage to pick it up like the old days. The strength of the formation is off to the left, but they bring motion back the other way. Crouch looked left, came back right on a big slip screen to Newcomb, and he quickly picks up another first down, 12 yards on a slick play with Crouch looking off the defense quickly and then coming back to the right. Let's take a look at Bobby Newcomb. You know he was an ex-quarterback, started the year at quarterback. What does he bring to the table? Speed and quarterback awareness. He knows what to do with the ball when he has it. Not like that first down, but you know, if he has a weakness, I'm not sure that this offense has caught up to the skills that he has, although it looks like Nebraska is finding more and more ways to use it. Miller returns. So it's one different look after another. Crouch keeps it behind, Miller cuts for the corner, and he makes it to the seven-yard line. 
Jason Webster, their outstanding defensive Jason back with the stop. Just to give you an idea of how different this Nebraska team is this year, in the last two games, Eric Crouch has ran the ball 30 times for 49 yards. Drew Brees gained 51 yards last week himself. Now, turn that one upside down. That's about as unbelievable a stat as I've heard in a while. Indeed. Matt Davison off to the left here on second down. They can pick up a first down without scoring inside the one. Alexander's stopped in the middle by Cornelius Anthony, number 46 out of Missouri City, Texas. Anthony on the stop. The wrecking crew defense was so successful last year, pushing Nebraska wide. A couple weeks ago, we watched those two big defensive tackles for Texas, Sean Rogers and Casey Hampton, stop it up inside with size. Mike Hakewood said, we don't have guys like that, but we have playmakers at the defensive line. That's what's going to be seen to be seen. Can they stop them with their athletic nick? Third and three, and Newcomb to the left. They practiced a slant play with Bobby coming hard. They run the option, though, and they're not going to get a first down. Nothing doing on that play because Gamble and Edwards, the nose guard and the Mike linebacker, stopped the quarterback that time. And so the Cornhuskers are three of four on third downs. But the fourth one was huge because it forces Nebraska into a field goal situation. Mike Hankowitz has great experience facing Nebraska. Not only was he the defensive coordinator here at AM for a while, but at Colorado, at Kansas. He's faced them over 15 times. And he said to me a couple days ago, they're running the same plays they ran before. I don't know, though. I haven't seen two wingbacks in the game much. Josh Brown for the lead. No. No. So each team misses a field goal. One is blocked, the other missed. Timeout. Scoreless here with 613 remaining in the first quarter. And Kansas State pulls off Colorado 2014. Closer than a lot of folks expected. They win it by six. The Wildcats will be here in Lincoln next week. But first things first, Dante Hall into the backfield for the Aggies. Dante Hall. Stop. Brown and Polk make the tackle. Let's take a look at the Dell, Dell game solutions now for Texas A&M. Don't be one dimensional. This is a passing team this year, but they still must continue to run the ball, take the pressure off McCowan. And I'm going to put the punt game as part of the offense. Not a bad thing when you got a puck punter like they have to punt the ball and see what happens once in a while, move the chains with the punt in the field position game. McCown incomplete. Let's finish up for Nebraska what they need to do. Hey, they ain't passing team, but I say force them to pass. Don't let them run the ball. Let's try to get them to pass if you're Nebraska. Then you can rush them. And once you get that happening, Charlie McBride said we had good blitzes, Brent, but we weren't close enough to the line of scrimmage. We were disguising too much. Move up, show it, come in and hit the quarterback. Third and nine, an obvious passing situation. Bernard in at running back. He sometimes slips out. Hardeman. McCown rolls behind Hardeman. Throws. Oh, intercepted. On the deflection, Mike Brown. The rover for Nebraska. Out of bounds. Inside the 20 yard line. The pass, I believe, was deflected by Julius Jackson. You're exactly right. When a quarterback sprints out, he never sees the backside linebacker who has no threat. McCown sprints out and never finds Jackson, the linebacker. Watch Jackson. He reads the quarterback right in the middle of the field, right there. He sees it. The ball looks like it's open. You got a wide receiver. Does not catch the ball very well, but the tip is made, and all of a sudden, Nebraska has the ball again down on the 20-yard line. Bobby Newcomb to the top of your screen out there in the sunshine. The split in. Applegate, the slot receiver. They come down to the field side. Here's the pitch to Alexander. Daylight to the nine-yard line. And a first down, Huskers. Brent, a lot of things do work when your offensive tackle does a good job hooking a guy. Watch this. Adam Jolch, number 69, hooks him. 
works, works, works. Look at that job right there by your offensive tackle. That allows you to cut off that defense. You don't have to be a fast eye back when you've got tackles that cut off the defensive end. Schultz did not practice Tuesday. It was a bit nicked, but it looks like he's okay to me now. First and goal for Nebraska. Play fake, crouch to throw on first down, deflected incomplete. That ball was deflected by Michael Jamison, the junior strong safety from Colleen, Texas. Michael Jamison read his keys. He knew Tracy Wistrom likes to come out and run those play action passes. He had him eyed up the whole way, cut in front of it, and should have intercepted that ball. First miss by Crouch, three of four for 44 yards. Second down and goal from the nine. AM is on their game plan. They're just getting blocked a bit by a little bit of different look. Here's that look again. Two wing backs, four wide receivers in the game. Wilson Thomas, the freshman wide receiver, Newcomb goes in motion. Miller. Ball's loose, and the Aggies recover. A fumble, and the third big mistake for Nebraska in the early going. The second turnover of this game, and Harold Robertson, the sophomore out of Dallas Lincoln High School, recovers his second fumble of the day. Brent, two turnovers inside red territory, cost them against Texas for Nebraska. Last week against Kansas, they had one, and today they had a turnover early, and then another turnover inside the red territory. That is very disheartening to a football team when that happens when you have an opportunity to put points on the board. R.C. Slocum's offense backed up to their own eight-yard line. The crowd buzzing in Lincoln. Tunes in for the first time, and he pounds to the 12-yard line. Stopped by Eric Johnson. Nobody wants this game yet. Or they want it too much, one of the two. I suspect the latter, my Yeah, friend. you're right. A little bit nervous. Second down and six. Two wide outs. Strength of the formation to the left. Toons, though, is offset to the right. Nothing doing because of a great defensive play by middle linebacker Carlos Polk, the junior from Rockford, Illinois. An ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chrysler, giving you back the romance of driving. Dell Computer, pioneering direct internet ideas for your business. Be direct, Dell. Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. This is one of those plays with your AM. Not a bad thing to punt the ball. Be very conservative on this play call. Need eight yards. Third down for McCown. Fullback blocks, got time, throws it complete. Beautiful pass out to the 24 yard line and an Aggie first down, 14 yards to Bethel Johnson, who returns from an injury and the sophomore contributes immediately. Bethel Johnson, a speed guy to the outside, second leading receiver. You're right, just coming back. He's a go to guy, obviously, and that comeback to the outside was perfectly thrown by Randy McCown that time. Randy. And I saw him last year, Ben, has really improved his throwing and accuracy as a quarterback. And the Aggies, as a result, have been putting it up more. Let's see what they do here on first down. Tunes to the left. And on first down, they are run away with Bernard. Nothing much doing, but you know, they're going to be passing on this next down. And we had a chance to ask Macau, why are you throwing the ball more this year? I think we're more efficient in the passing game. And that started, you know, as soon as we got you know, back back home from the Sugar Bowl last year, we coached Logan McCain to me and said that we need to be more effective in our passing game. Yeah, last year they went in, what, the Sugar Bowl played Ohio State, and they found out those eight and nine-man fronts are too tough to run the ball against. You have to at least have the threat of the passing game. Joe Germain in the if you will. Yep. Second down and 10, and here's McCown with that throw we expected. Receivers are covered, dances off to the right. Remember, he has an injured left shoulder. He takes it out of bounds at the 20 with Mike Brown in pursuit. 
You know, we haven't had a chance to tell you about this Nebraska defense. Steve Warren out of Springfield, Missouri. He's their leading defensive lineman this year. And in the linebacking trio, Brian Shaw started ahead of Ortiz today. But Carlos Polk really has contributed already, and he's almost 100%. Mike Brown with that deflection for an interception. He anchors that defensive backfield. We are seeing a lot of Dion Booker, number 14 at safety. Third down and 13. Short drop, got a fire, got a man open, and he threw behind him. His roommate, Matt Bumgardner, had to reach back. He of uh, the circus catch could not trap his artist that one. And Dion Booker, who's in that defensive backfield, delivered the blow, and the young man not up yet. Brent, you know, that time Bumgardner really did not help the quarterback. It was a zone. Here's Booker way over here. If Bumgardner would have stayed outside and read it, he would not have given Booker time to get over and make this hit. Baumgartner does not read it right, cuts in too quickly. See how quick he cuts in? That made that play a much tougher play for McCown, and he took the hit. You see McCown, pressure up front. That's going to be the key. Steve Warren had a great game last week, two sacks and a quarterback pressure, and he continues to play good football at the nose tackle position. So Baumgartner's still down, and the one thing that AM cannot afford is for that left shoulder of McCown to be shaken up. Hey, let's take it as a prime. Let's take a break. Bumgardner's up. He's okay. Time out. Right now is the deep man, but Bobby Newcomb, as Cornhusker fans realize, is always out there. There he is. Gary has him circled, and they're up against the best punter in college football, in my opinion, Shane Leckler. They're going to go for the block here. They're coming. Now Davison backs it off, however. Coming off the outside, and Leckler oh, booms it toward Walker. Inside the 25-yard line, down at the 20-yard line. Rolls back, he is down. They mark it at the 22. This is for exercise, ladies and gentlemen. This is simply for fun. Jason Webster with punt coverage that was fabulous. Let's hope his knee touched because <laughs> he got it spin. This is not the NFL, my friend. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Look at these mistakes of Nebraska. First play. Uh, the first the play, Newcomb. Then they hit the upright. And then Willie Miller on an easy handoff inside. Three big misses for Nebraska. Two fumbles already, a missed field goal, and 0 for 2 in the red zone. That is not good when you're trying to reestablish your offense. A hard-hitting football game. The Aggie band is here, but not the Aggie mascot. And folks, I miss Reveille. <laughs> I've been told that Reveille is watching this game on TV. Reveille, sit there, enjoy it. I hope to give you another bone, my friend. It is unbelievable that you're not here with the Aggie. Back goes Crouch. Pocket forms downfield. Newcomb goes. No. He underthrew him, and that allowed Cedric Curry to knock the ball away. Can't be interference on a ball that was that badly underthrown. Yeah, and, and you know why Eric Crouch underthrew it? He waited too long. One, two, three, four, five. Set up, throw the ball. You got a speed guy like Bobby Newcomb like that, he'll just outrun the ball. You literally can't throw it far enough. Cedric Curry does a good job on that deep ball, but Eric Crouch made the mistake by waiting way too long, maybe almost a half second too long. Cedric might have intercepted it. He take a second, look. second down and 10, Crouch off to the right. Here's Alexander, the pitch man, for not much doing. Uh, you know, this is a nice looking new field. Jack Arood, I think uh, this is a spectacular field that we're looking down on here, my friend. Well, Brent, it's called field turf. It looks like grass, feels like grass, but actually it's artificial. It's a combination of silicate and 28,000 tires that have been ground up. Now, Texas A&M has never played here. They, in fact, had never seen this before. So the equipment man, the equipment men called the other teams that played here and said, what shoes should we bring? They brought the molded spikes for most of their team. Third down and 10, Jack. Buckhalter in from the shotgun, fires it incomplete, and it's three and out for Nebraska. The thing I wonder, can we get this installed in our backyard? That would be nice. Huh? Looks like you can get some wedges off this real nice. Yeah. You know what? I think a lot of, you're talking about the turf, a lot of teams are going to look this up north and say, is it safe, is it soft, and is it durable? Because a lot of those teams that are lowering their fields are having problems, a la Michigan and soon Ohio State, that are going to lower their field 14 feet. So how about this, the Aggies sent two deep men. 
Chris Taylor and Jason Webster. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Hayden felt. Here's Taylor, the wide receiver from the 41-yard line, dances back to the 45-yard line. Well, Joe Hamilton, one of our favorites from Georgia Tech. Let's check in with John Saunders and see how the young quarterback from the Ramblin' Wreck is doing, John. Well, Brent, the young quarterback here on this. The rest of the ACC is happy he's not a young quarterback anymore. They want him out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Here's McCown handing it off. Toombs runs into the middle of that line. You know, one of the things that surprises me about the Aggies, Gary, let me ask you about this. I look over here at Toombs, he's gained only 340 yards, a 4.4 average and four. I thought the youngster from Kilgore, Texas would break out this year. Brent, it's what you emphasize as a team. This year, the call of this team is to throw the ball. Seven out of eight games, AM has passed for more than they run. No running back has carried the ball more than 10 times in a game. Not off to a good start here. Eight carries from scrimmage for only one yard. So McCown gonna put it back up and in trouble. Dances away. Oh. And a save. It'll be third down, but oh, that was ever, ever so close. See, that's the difference that Charlie McBride is going to try to bring to this Nebraska defense the rest of the year. Hey, let's not disguise these blitzes and get there a half step late. Let's get there a half step early and move up and blitz. That time, Mike Brown was the one who came around and poked the ball for McCowan. McCowan is a good throw. But he's not one of those game breakers if he gets out of the pocket. I don't think there's any fear in Nebraska. And Randy McCown's going to beat him with his legs. Left tackle Michael Mahan, the redshirt freshman out of Homer, Louisiana, saved the day on that. We come to the end of the first quarter. No score. Texas A&M and Nebraska. Let's go back to take our best look at what we have to see if Joe Walker had his laying down. We got a little receiver, uh, a &M guys kind of blocked it. I'm not sure if Joe Walker's knee was down or not, but clearly one more look from behind. What did happen is the referee clearly blew the whistle. So AM quit on the play. He might have got a few more yards, but I doubt if he'd have gone the whole way for the touchdown. But I, I couldn't tell from either one of those looks if he was down or not. Third down and 18 for the Aggies. They don't want to risk a turnover. With Leckler, they can play field position football. I'm sure R.C. Slocum thinks exactly that way right now. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Put it up in the air. Well, you told me that this was a wide open Aggie offense. And yep. now Leckler comes back out to punt again for Texas A&M. Folks, if you needed one punter, in a college football game, here he is, Shane Leckler, because he was a high school quarterback, good passer last year. We did those Aggie games late. They had injuries at the quarterback position. There was always Leckler there to back up. You can see the two deep men deployed and Newcomb a little bit further back, standing on the 40-yard line, backing off the line this time, backing up now to the 45. Always be ready for a reverse when two people are back. They punt away. This is what Slocum told us he was going to do. A beautiful Aggie bounce by Leckler. What we're talking about, the All-American punter buries Nebraska at the five-yard line. That's a 58-yard punt, ladies and gentlemen. Well, next Saturday at 12 noon, instead of a national championship, you'll see Penn State trying to hold on to get to the Rose Bowl against Michigan. The Wolverines and the Nifty yep. Lions next Saturday, live at 12 Eastern time. And what a Donnybrook across the country now. Exactly the same weekend a year ago when Ohio State was beaten by Michigan State and knocked them out of the national championship game. And you're right, Brent. They still got Michigan and Michigan State. They're not in the Rose Bowl yet. First down and 10. Horrible field position. Alexander with the first carry. A couple of yards and no more. Ran one more point about the weapon Shane Lechner. Last week, Oklahoma State had seven total return yards in the game, in the punt game. And for his whole career, Shane Lechner has never averaged in a game less than 41 yards in any game. Great consistency along with a great lane. Second down and eight. He becomes an offensive weapon. There's no doubt about that. John Gibson, one of the three wideouts. Applegates, the motion wing back. 
deflected at the line. It'll be third down and eight coming up as Lonnie Madison, number 97 from the Woodlands outside of Houston, knocks it away. On a gorgeous Saturday afternoon, Texas A&M and Nebraska, a big 12 matchup, and it is scoreless with 14 minutes to go here in the first half. And in case you just joined us, the stunner of the day, Minnesota goes into Happy Valley and beats Penn State 24-23 on a last-second field goal after a deflected pass set it up for the game winner. The best deflected pass I've seen since Matt Davison caught that one for the Huskers in Columbia, Missouri. Third down and eight. Handed off Buckholzer, pulling a defender with him out to the 11 and short of a first down. Royland Bradley, Jr., makes the stop. Nebraska's defense gets credit as a great rush defense, and they truly are. But you know, this AM wrecking crew defense does not have to take a back seat in rush defense. They're only giving up 90 yards a game, also. And so far, Nebraska, outside of the option play, is having no success running the ball. This is two consecutive three and outs for Nebraska. And Hayden Felt goes back to the Cornhusker end zone. Chris Taylor will try to give the Aggies outstanding field position. Booms it from the 33. Beats the gunner, slides to the left. And he'll be out of bounds at the 44-yard line. When you come back, the Aggies will be 56 yards away from Pater. Time out. Suffered a concussion last week against Kansas. He's back at safety. Deion Booker over on the Nebraska sideline. First down and 10 for Randy McCown and the Aggies. Off a of play fake. McCown gets great blocking, goes middle. Incomplete at the 15 yard line to Bethel Johnson. Coverage by number 22, Ralph Brown. Ralph Brown had decent coverage, but that again is another quarterback who waited too long to throw the ball. Bethel Johnson had Brown on his, kind of like his tail right there, shielded. The ball was out there. Look at how much Johnson has to almost stop for that football. That's why Ralph Brown was able to get back in and make the play. Second down and 10. Toons, the running back. Toons. Three yards, and the Black Shirts gang up, led by Aaron Wills. So this Nebraska defense against the Aggie offense, and the Aggies, as Gary pointed out, have had trouble running the ball this year, and they're being shut down pretty good. Well, our Aflac trivia question. Who was the first Texas A&M coach to beat Nebraska? Last year, of course, R.C. Slocum became the second. Down at Texas a but who was the first? Some of you Aggie fans are all over that. Third down and seven, the ball on the 48-yard line. Shotgun McCown. Middle, got it, Cole. First down, Aggies at the 41-yard line. Very interesting to watch an AM football team from a year ago. You mentioned, you know, how much they've changed. They were a running team last year, but they only averaged 159 yards a game. So you look at your team, Steve Craigthorpe, their offensive coordinator, talks R.C. Kosolkum into saying, our talents at wide receiver, that's really their fourth wide receiver right there, Chris Cole, on the game and catches. You go to him, put pressure on teams different ways. Harder than the fullback, Bernard, the tailback. Across to Bernard, picks his way and slammed after a gain of a yard. And, uh, Jack Root, how's the crowd here in Husker Land today, my friend? Well, Brent, I would have to think that maybe the crowd is not as geared up as they were when they announced that Penn State defeat. This crowd with this back and forth and the miscues by Nebraska, they're still loud, but they're not loud like we thought they would be and the way Gary thought they would be. Maybe, Gary, this intangible is swinging the other way. Second down and nine for the Aggies in Nebraska territory. Seth McKinney. Calls out the blocking assignment. Got great protection and got it. Inside the 35-yard line, Matt Bumgardner, shaken up earlier in the game, makes his first catch. Of course, Matt Bumgardner, almost a folk hero around Texas A&M with the catches he's made. Big 12 championship. 
He just seems to be one of those guys that finds the ball when big things are ready to happen. Nebraska's got a guy just like that, Matt Davidson. Yeah, you know, uh, I covered both those catches, yep. and both were spectacular, Gary. Third down and three. McCown against pressure, throws in the teeth of it. First down at the 20-yard line. A 14-yard pass to Leroy Hodge. The senior makes his first catch of the game, and McCown was feeling defensive heat that time. If if you hadn't seen a Big 12, Big 8, AM Nebraska game in the last 20 years and you're watching this, you've got to be going, where have I been? What is going on here? Throwing the ball all over the field. This one was up and hot, came up and made a great catch that time. Now Dwayne Goins goes out to the right as a wide receiver. Toons is jumped from behind by Eric Johnson as they gang up on the running game here. Eric Johnson on the stop. Things have changed so much in football teams are willing to do more spread out offenses put pressure on different people and an influence of the pro game is so great on the college game charlie mcbride knows it's not like stopping iowa state or kansas or kansas state anymore or 20 years ago people are going to spread it out you on you and put pressure on you and he's will try to do just that second down and ten in pitch and here's Bernard out running the defensive end slips the defensive back and out of bounds inside the 15. So ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you today by the wide track Grand Prix by Pontiac wider is better Aflac without it no insurance right there's nothing that can turn your home crowd against you as a couple of turnovers early in a football game they don't like that at all third and four Tiki Hardeman the fullback Behind him, Eric Bernard, who goes in motion. Roll left McCown again, throws high, incomplete to Cole that time. And Ralph Brown, excellent coverage by the corner. And a few words with Cole as he walks away. Nebraska was very fortunate that time. AM put one man in motion, two Nebraska defenders follow him out there. That means a mismatch somewhere, but good coverage on the play, and they get away with it. Kitchens to try it again. His first attempt was blocked by Kyle Vandenbosch. This one a 31 yard attempt. There's Vandenbosch right there, right in line. Blocked again, 0 for 2. As Vandenbosch comes up big again. He came up tall again and he jumps. <laughs> Right in line, he does the old LeVar leap right there. And Vandenbosch right up the middle. Kitchens has his problem so much so that R.C. Slope, well, there he is, right to the left side. Watch him lay out and make this trail. Two steps, one, two, that vertical leap. Gets his right hand, almost hit him in the head, didn't it? Gary wins the last scoreless tie you saw. Timeout <laughs> in Lincoln. 9.28 left in the first half. Kyle Vandenbosch. We are scoreless. What would Penn State have paid for one of those? Mm. Mm. About 10 million bucks? LeVar Arrington, <laughs> he was trying. You might be on the low side. <laughs> Crouch. Pulls it back. Wide open underneath his wisdom. Tracy to the 39 and a first down. Cornhuskers. Let's go down now to Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, after Kyle Vandenbosch came off the field and out of the sidelines, Charlie McBride walked up to him, congratulated him for that block. Then he looked up at me and he said, we're having fun now. <laughs> He'd have a lot more fun, Jack, if this offense had punched in a couple of scores, my for, friend. For the way this defense has, has given up some plays this year, Charlie was in as good a mood as I can remember yesterday, can you? Absolutely. I mean, you get a smile out of Charlie Two. McBride, you're doing a good job. Here's that double wing look again. Crouch keeps it, finds daylight. Out of bounds at midfield. Close to another Nebraska first down. Brandon Jennings after a run now officially of 11 yards, and that's that new formation we've yeah. been looking at. Brent, Mike Hankwitz now the defensive coordinator for AM probably has gone over with this defense a new look. Four wide receivers for this team. It's like the Air Force. Fisher DeBerry must have traveled by here uh, last week, or there was some burning of the phone lines because Nebraska's going to find ways to get the ball to different guys. Here's Newcomb, here's Sean Applegate. Two wings, four wide receivers. <laughs> 
winding straight ahead with Miller to the Aggie 46 yard line with Ryan Campbell making the stop. If you watch the wide receivers for Nebraska, obviously you don't catch a lot of balls here. When you come here, you know you have to block. And so far, those Nebraska wide receivers, Davison, Newcomb, Applegate, and Wilson Thomas, number nine, have all been down there throwing at the legs of the AM defensive backs. But turnovers are keeping the pressure on Nebraska. Two fumbles today. Applegate, Crouch keeps it again, and he is caught from behind by Lonnie Madison. Amazing what those defensive interior linemen can do if they beat a block. And that was had to be a missed assignment on the offensive line. Dominic Raoli's talking to Hoxstein and Sherman, his two guards, and saying, did we have a slip or a scoop? I don't know what that means, but I've heard him say that. You know, we got a <laughs> sound good. It sounds good. It makes you, you know, an expert when you do that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> third third and long. Time. I didn't care if it was a slip or scoop, just block the SOB. That's what he was saying. Exactly. Sammy Davis in as a fifth <laughs> defensive back. Not the same. He's a fifth <laughs> defensive back for the Aggies. Crouch deflected again. Incomplete. So he's had a couple of passes. Well, remember the Aflac trivia quiz? Who was the first Texas A&M coach to beat Nebraska? The Bear. Paul Bear Bryant, 1955. The Aggies 27, Nebraska nothing. That's one of the toughest you football bet. teams in history. Brent, you asked me when's the last time I saw a nothing nothing tie? Red Wings Blackhawks <laughs> before they started overtime. The Red Wings couldn't score on the Hawks. I'm shocked. <laughs> Long time ago before they had the overtime. Game. Hayden fell into punt again for Nebraska. This time Jason Webster goes back. Webster going to let this one go and hope it goes in the end zone. It's not. This time it's going to be the Cornhuskers who will count it. A 43 yard punt. This surface, if nothing else, is great for punters. Timeout. Aggies and the Cornhuskers are scoreless. 7.34 to go. Total yards. Texas AM with the ball are only 45 yards. They've averaged less than two yards a play, Gary. Brent, you know that special team X is still up for grabs. Both teams are doing pretty well and pretty bad in the special teams. Lousy field goal kicking. Great punting. Tunes. Powerful football. I think he had it ripped right away from him. Ball is coming loose at about the 10 yard line. The Huskers are celebrating. They've got it. Jamar Toombs, the big fullback that time, fighting for yards. You're right, Brent. You know the offense said, hey, we're not getting any yards. Less than two yards. Get in there and fight for extra yards. Mike Brown makes the tackle and rips it loose at the same time. And that's the turnovers that this black shirt defense that Charlie McBride was looking for. Jason Lohr, who wasn't expected to play today, recovered that fumble. First down and 10. Buckhalter, he battles his way to the sixth. Now, the one thing Buckhalter's going to do is hang on to the football. He had that do you remember that play in Austin, Texas, when he was reaching for the goal line and he turned it over? Biggest fumble of the game as he came carry around the left side. And he's down there to just maybe the six inch line, half yard line at the most, reaches it out, and the ball stays in by a half a yard. It might have been the biggest play of the football game. The red zone has been tough this year. Eight turnovers inside the 20 yards. Second down, Crouch keeps it now, pitches Buck Holter. He'll try the right side. Nothing doing. Jamison got him first. He is short of the five yard line. It'll be third down and about five yards to go for Nebraska. They can pick up a first down without scoring, but this team, and Gary just referred to it, this Nebraska team struggles as much in the red zone as any he, Cornhusker team that I can remember in this decade. You no, know, I think there's a I couple think, of reasons. He wants a Frank timeout. So, this, he knows how big this one is, and I think it's a good timeout right here. This isn't wasting a timeout. Third and long. Two reasons. No, not the great speed they're used to at tailback, and they don't have that big quarterback that can break tackles like Scott Frost or Tommy Frazier. 
So we'll take a break. Game dominated by turnovers, and Nebraska trying to take advantage of one now in the red zone. But it is going to be third and five coming up after Toombs fumbled it away, and the Huskers have been stopped twice. And you have to wonder what the Nebraska coaching staff feels about two downs and foregoing the field goal attempt this time. But let's let it unfold. They're on the right hash. Newcomb is on the right wing. Newcomb's going to go in motion. Coming from behind, inside, there's that pitch to Newcomb. He's short. He's short of the first down by a couple of yards as they flip it to Newcomb. And Bradley, along with Robertson, not fooled. Robertson has already recovered two fumbles today. And the field goal team trots on to the field for Nebraska. Josh Brown hit the upright with his first try. See, that's one of those plays, if it works, you're a genius if you're a coach. And when it doesn't work, everybody kind of goes a shuffle pass, a third and long. It's just a play that they've had some belief in. They had success with it already, and that's one I can't criticize, even though they didn't make it. A 20-yard attempt for Josh. Frankie London will put it down. Finally, with 5.29 to go, Josh Brown, and the freshman from Oklahoma, puts Nebraska ahead. I'm out. Hayden Fell set to kick it off, and uh, this has been a day featuring all sorts of adventures with the field goal units. Finally, we've had one made after one hit the upright, but take a look at what has happened when the Aggies have tried field goals. The defensive end, Kyle Vandebosch, come diving a second time, and he has blocked two field goals here today. But Nebraska leads it by three with 529 to go in the first half. And of course A&M had their shot. I mean Nebraska had their shot at one off the goal post already and finally they make it one for four and they haven't been long ones. Chip shots. Bethel Johnson. Driven to the end zone. It'll come out on the 20 yard line. Well tomorrow the phenomenon is back for 15 straight oh, after that. You bet. Well, now the pressure will go to Virginia Tech. They play Miami next week. McCown. Yards with one interception. Carlos Polk right here, here in the line of scrimmage has given Nebraska problems. Penalty flag on the fumble recovered by Vandenbosch, but there is a penalty flag on the play. Hold on. That was Carlos Polk that came right through there from that linebacker spot. Ball start on the offense. Before the snap, remember. Very So that's fortunate. a break for Slocum and the Aggies, and we have had our first penalty of the game. Here's the middle linebacker right here. It's giving problems to AM as he creases through the line of scrimmage right there. Already, Carlos Polk has made two plays. This time, right from the backside, the tackle can't get it, and AM is very fortunate that they came away with that one to get a first and 15. Nobody likes first and 15. Unless you fumble on first and ten. Eric Bernard is the tailback. McCown play fake, going to come deep, got Cole incomplete. Had him open, overthrew him a bit into double coverage, or Chris Cole, the senior from Orange, Texas, would have had a big game. Let's check in down below with our colleague Jack Aru. Jack. Well, Brent, the score may be three zip, but if you look at R.C. Slocum, he's happy so far. In fact, when the defense came off after that field goal by Nebraska, he congratulated them. Now, one of the things to consider may be why R.C. is 31 and three in his 11 years in November. The only three losses he's had in November to arch rival Texas. Second down and 15. Tunes to the 17. He may be happy with his defense, but I can't imagine he's too happy with averaging two yards per play on offense. That eventually is going to catch up with you. You know, sometimes you can feel good about yourself on the road, but right now, A&M's offense is really struggling to find anything. I think they should throw the ball a little short. They seem to be going for too many big plays in the passing game. A pound of four of 12 with one interception. His long game, 14 yards. His 15th pass of the game.
slips away, and in a foot race, he won't get it off. He is sacked by Steve Warren, the best defensive lineman here in Lincoln this year. And the Black Shirts come away from a grind with their second sack of the game. The game plan was to move the linebackers up a step and blitz them. Force McCowan out of the pocket and get it cleaned up by the defensive lineman. That's exactly what happened that time. Two linebackers came from the same side, and McCowan does not scare Nebraska. Here is Leckler. Walker and Craver go deep. Walker and the 33. Nowhere as he is thrown down to the ground by Jason Webster, who is fierce on Great game he's having. Great game. Only a two-yard gain. And a reminder coming about Valvoline halftime 99. John Saunders and Terry Bowden will tell you all about the Minnesota upset of Penn State. You could not be happier for Golden Gopher coach Glenn Mason. I know a lot of people in Big 12 territory remember him from his days down in Kansas. Kansas. Went up at uh, Minnesota, and he has started to put the show on the road up there with the Golden Gophers. They had failed a couple of times and tough losses to Penn State, but not this time. And they knocked, for the time being, Penn State out of contention for a national championship as we hit the November stretch. First and 10, and Buckhalter is stopped at the 44-yard line. Well, the score, yeah, I'm sorry, Brent. When the score is three to nothing, you don't expect too much from your quarterbacks. Not a lot of yards for the amount of hits they're getting. I'll tell you that right now. Ten hits for Eric Crouch, nine hits for Randy McCown. And McCown's getting a lot of hits, Brent, and he's not even running the option. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, you, you expect them if you're Eric Crouch, but you're, if you're just throwing the ball and you've got nine hits already, that's not a good sign. It's time they stack the eye, and he'll break it out. Applegate, Crouch pulls back off the play fake, going to try to fire it to him, and he does. Applegate, the motion man, breaks the first tackle. Jamison finally stops him at the 42-yard line, but Sean Applegate out of Lincoln right here with a 16-yard reception from Eric Crouch. Brent, Nebraska went for the big play, but the safety, Michael Jamerson that time, read his keys. They tried to go to Winstrom deep, didn't get him, and I think if you're an a and m defense, you're going to settle for those play-action passes that just move the chains and don't change the scoreboard. Eric Crouch on the day is 6 of 11, 75 yards, no interceptions. First down and 10, the Aggie 42 off a play fake. Guns it down the middle, Wistrom incomplete. This is a veteran secondary for Texas A&M. Three seniors and a junior. So far, it has been drilled in them all week. Read your keys, read your keys. Look at those uncovered offensive linemen. If they pop, pop up for a blocking type pass play, cover your guys, and they have not made a mistake yet. It's a long game. You got to do it the whole game. This is an option formation. They'll move this guy either way and run the option out of it. Two, two, two. And down in 10. And Crouch keeps it on that option play. And he is tackled crisply by Brian Gamble, the redshirt freshman. One of the things that Mike Hankowitz talked to me about is Nebraska has a plethora of different formations. But one thing you can depend on, they're going to run the option from them all. Now, they've added a few formations, a few wrinkles for this game, and it looks to me the biggest thing they've decided this game is we got to get the ball to Bobby Newcomb. So far, it hasn't had a big impact on the game. He's rushed once for six yards. He's caught three passes for 23 yards. He's not in the game. And Crouch with time. Out of bounds and incomplete. See, that's a little tough to understand because you know you're going to go to Davison in that situation. Two wide receivers. You've got an inside receiver that nobody fears, and you figure the ball's going to Davison. Webster just squats on it and makes him throw one to the sideline safely for Nebraska and good for the Aggies. Number 17, Dan Hadenfeld. So Dan Hadenfeld trots on for his fourth punt of the day. Jason Webster out of Houston back deep. AM is playing safe. They're playing for the fake right now. Nebraska leads it by a field goal. Caught down on the one-yard line. Talk about punt coverage by both of these teams as Hayden Felt responds to the challenge from Leckler. 
And let's remind you that next Saturday, BCS showdowns out a game next Saturday. A minute 46 to go in the half. Texas A&M has to have a first down, or they're going to give up more points in the first half. Straight ahead, McCown, who is the leading rusher. Nebraska definitely game. needs to take a timeout. Somebody, there it is, finally. Somebody turns around and looks and takes a timeout. Let's check in with Jack Aroot down below, Jack. Well, Brent, we've just gotten word from the sideline there may be a problem with Bobby Newcomb. He came out and didn't appear in that last series much, complaining of a problem with his hip. There's only a minute and 38 to go in this first half, so the doctors and the medical people will be able to service Newcomb, so to speak, during halftime, but we'll have to watch and see just how effective Bobby is in the second half. He was injured on that shovel pass when they were trying to score inside the 10-yard line the last time that Bobby Newcomb touched the ball. Let's take one take more look. look. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, Brent, that makes something hard to understand. Understandable, doesn't it? The guy's hurt. Here's the shovel pass. Kind of juggles it a bit and gets squashed from two sides on the same play that time. See his hand, his left hand right there is reached on his back or on his hip or tailbone right there. You know that was? That was Robertson who slammed into him. And uh, Newcomb, we get word now, it is a hip pointer. And uh, that is a very painful injury that uh, certainly makes him at the best well, questionable for the second half of this football game. A hip pointer can be fixed. They, they, they do something in the Easy to room. say on somebody they, else's oh, no, that we've no, done done shot. We've all done it. And yeah. It's a too big a game. You know, take a shot. You can say it. It's yeah. okay around me. Go in there. You take a little shot. It's not a dangerous thing. It's a bruise. Gary, we all go to the dentist. <laughs> we can talk about it. No problem. <laughs> But you're sitting in the chair. You're not catching passes to the hill. <laughs> Second down <laughs> and nine. Hardeman and two. The two big fellas in that backfield for the Aggies. Hardeman, number 20, plows right straight ahead, hoping to eat up some time. Tony Ortiz out of the Bronx, who went to high school up in Waterbury, Connecticut, making the stop for Solich's defense. And uh, Coach Frank Solich, who was a longtime assistant coach here under Tom Osborne, took over prior to last season. In 21 years on the coaching staff here, was one time a fullback who rushed for 204 yards against the Air Force back in the 60s. Frank was telling us how ironic it was the first three games of the year everybody was on him for not getting enough touches for Eric Crouch and now all of a sudden six games later it's not enough touches for Bobby Newcomb. That's the way it goes. It's the big time. You're coaching the big time when you don't win by enough people want to know who's getting the touches. So the Huskers have exhausted their timeouts here with 1.30 to go. Third down and eight. You would not expect McCown to uh, attempt a pass in this situation the way the Aggies have been pounding away. But on the other hand, I don't recognize the Texas A&M offense much anyway. Well, that's so right. He'll let it unfold. When you run the ball in the first half 18 times for nine yards and you know how important a first down is I think the time of a minute 31 is inconsequential you need the first down more than you need to say 40 seconds time will not be a factor for Nebraska I think you call the play you think you can get a first down for so Ortiz and his black shirted friends get ready they're going to throw it out of the end zone. He's going to overthrow. It's intercepted at the 41-yard line by Mike Brown. They're over. And Brown brings it back inside the 20. you got to wonder about that call from your own end zone with 1.30 to go. What I wonder about where the ball was thrown. They needed to throw the ball for a first down, not down the field. The odds of completing this ball are so low now, you might not think you're going to get it intercepted, but come on. The chances, you need a first down, not a touchdown. There's the free safety. Comes over and makes an easy interception. That's easier than a punt. That is the third turnover of the game. Two interceptions and one fumble. And the Huskers, without timeouts, 119 to go here in the first half. Inside the 20, crouch to the sideline, hits Davison out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Stops the clock right now with 114 to go. Remember a year ago, in the two-minute offense, Nebraska fell behind 21-7, to came back, 
in that shotgun offense. Looks like they're in a semi hurry up here now. The receivers are out wide. A little sugar huddle inside, and then he'll give a call to the wide receivers with hand signals. Second down and four. The Huskers spread the field with four wideouts. Crouch in trouble. Down at the 15 yard line because Cedric Curry saw that the quarterback was unprotected and he was all over him that time. The clock, remember, cannot be stopped by Nebraska. So we are inside of a minute here on third down. That staff has to think about a field goal. Crouch throwing it, fires it incomplete. That does stop the clock for fourth down, and they do at least get a field goal attempt coming up inside of one minute after that turnover. Second down call again was the shuffle pass. It has not been good to him. Worked the first time, but the last two times, Frank Solch got nothing out of it. Josh Brown has hit an upright and kicked a field goal here today. This will be a 31 yard attempt. London is the holder. And it's 6 0. So the interception by the leading tackler on this Nebraska defense. Mike Brown, a senior out of Scottsdale, Arizona, gives the Huskers a chance. Jack Arut, there was a, uh, well, pretty remarkable auction in town last night. Boy, Brent, indeed there was. In fact, I'm holding one of the memorabilia items here. This is a football signed by all the Nebraska Cornhuskers and Bob Devaney from 1963. This was the type of stuff that was auctioned off last night. Most of it is set most of the time on Bob Devaney's mantle, but his family decided to sell it at auction to raise money for disadvantaged students. Scholarships, that is. The high point, maybe Bob's Cadillac sedan bill that went for $18,500. Overall, the University of Nebraska was given a check yesterday for $42,000. Now, the fellow that bought that uh, red Cadillac, Jack, says he's going to drive it to every corn husband. Right. How come Jack didn't sit there down there with the Cadillac? He's got the football. <laughs> There's Mike Brown. And Brent, it, it reminded me a bit of how Major Applewhite struggled in the first half against Nebraska. And then in the second half, he came back eight for nine and two touchdowns. Randy McCowan needs that type of a second half to get his offense going. Well, he's going to need help from his offensive line. They're having a tough time opening holes against this Husker defense. They'll take a knee down here. Three timeouts left for the Aggies and 46 seconds. I think he may need some help also in the play calling. I mean, that's probably the sixth deep pass they've thrown in this football game trying to get a cheap score. They need to throw the crossing routes, the slant routes, the out routes, something across the middle of the field. Well, senior Randy McCown, 4 of 13 for 43 yards and two picks. A look at the young man from Jacksonville, Texas, and his brother Josh, the starting quarterback at SMU. And the family has quite a time trying to watch both quarterbacks down there in Texas. First down and 10, and they're going to take a knee. They're going to be willing because they're on. They, oh, now, yeah. if they were at home, they wouldn't do this. Well, they're going to be know. booed by the home fans. I, but I on the road, you can do this, and you can trot on into the locker room, and you're down by only two field goals. Now, yep. the last time AM was <laughs> shut out at the half was back in 1996. It was against Baylor. Bears led them 7 0. Came back to win that one 24 7. My friend, I like your strategy, but I think even at home this time, they would have to take a knee. They're just not doing enough offensively. Their crowd might boom if they threw another pass if they were home. You trust the home crowds more well, than I do. You can't take a chance. <laughs> You're in the game. Down two field goals. The big story, Penn State loses. Let's send you to New York. John Saunders and Terry Bowden. Nebraska leads Texas A&M 6 nothing with Gary Danielson. I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you back. And uh, Gary, tell me, does Nebraska have a realistic chance to get into the championship game now that Penn State has lost? You're being nice. You know they do, right? <laughs> you know they do. You I know, you. You know <laughs> get it out you of the know park. college football. Anything can still happen, and a lot of the guys up there are going to play. You. Look at the standings right now. You're going to see guys that are up there. Penn State, take them out because they lost. Remember. They still play. Nebraska still plays a team up. Virginia Tech has a game. Florida, Florida State play each other. 
anybody can still win this thing. If, if Minnesota can beat Penn State, anything can happen. Yeah, remember a year ago, we all Absolutely. went down the stretch thinking Absolutely. it was going to be Kansas State and UCLA. Funny thing happened on the way to that time. But you know what? The people that are voting, I hope they didn't watch Nebraska in the first half. Their defense is great, but I don't know if this is a national championship offense for this team. And AM, their defense has played well too, but offensively, it's been a little bizarre. Well, we'll see what the Aggies can come up with here in the second half. They certainly have not been able to run the football, and the Aggies will get the first series here to start the second half as Hayden Felt will kick it off for the Corn Huskers. <laughs> Bethel Johnson, the deep man for the Aggies. And for me, Randy McCown, he almost has to think back to his first start ever. And he went two for eight in 1997, four sacks and two fumbles in the first half. He has to turn it around. Johnson coming out. Middle return to the 22. And we check in with Jack Arruda on what the coaches said, Jack. Well, Brett, first let's update you on Bobby Newcomb. Gary, you were right. He got administered to two during halftime. He will play in the second half. Now, Frank Solich says everything's okay except for special teams. He said right there it's kind of a mixed bag from my perspective. R.C. Slocum, on the other hand, did not want to let go of the fact that they have yet to have a big play offensively. He says that's what we need to get back in this game. Mike Brown back there at safety along with Dion Booker for the Huskers. Couldn't disagree more. AM needs little plays, not big plays. First down and 10. And they hand it off to Joe Weber. So Joe Weber winds up with a with an assignment here against Nebraska. Our Morgan Stanley Dean Witter first half stats. Folks, look at the total yards for the Aggies there. Only 46, three turnovers resulting in those two field goals. And that's where we stand. Don't need to circle much on that one, do we? No, sir. Sure. <laughs> kind of talks by itself. Hardeman in with Weber. Dante Hall apparently re-injured himself in the first half. Well, you talk about this Nebraska defense, they're always good, and they're up there again this year. They may not have the type of player that makes the huge play, but as a group, I think all 11 of them fit together well. They have a very good secondary. I think the only difference in this defense, they don't have the difference maker at rush end. Although Vandenborg's done a pretty good job today blocking field goals. I would say. Third down and one. And they pound Hardeman behind the right side. Hi, Muley. Their outstanding right guard over there, number 62, leading the way. And Solich's defense. Brent, if there is some hope for the Aggies, they should just look back to a week ago. Against Oklahoma State, the Aggies rushed for just 19 yards in the first half and came back for 133 in the second half. I don't think they'll be able to rush for 133 against this defense, but there is hope that they can turn it around. I think they have to continue to go to the short passing game. They have to move the chains. I said continue. Start going to the fast short passing game. Well, they move it with the power running game that time. So a first down for R.C. Slocum and the Aggies. And that is only their fourth first down of this game. And they're on their own 33. The down repositioning. Down in trouble. That is the third sack of the game. Aaron Wills, the senior from Omaha's Burke High School. Remember that shoulder problem that Randy McCown has. Got hit coming from the outside right here. You have to assume that's a bust. There's only three guys to that side. The offensive line should be able to hand it. You can see it. Two guys went inside, leaving the outside coming. That's a bust. Randy would never have been able to know that was coming. His Bro tight end made a mistake. No, Derek Broughton, Gary, made a mistake over there on that side. You're exactly right. Second down and 15. Play fake McCown in trouble and down at the 26-yard line. The fourth sack of the game 
And that one by Eric Johnson, the senior linebacker from Phoenix's Alhambra High School. One of the problems Randy McCowan is having is he's turning his head as he goes back. Watch his head. He turns around and looks back. It's really not a play action pass for him to again refocus downfield. He's not having, he doesn't know where those linebackers went. He's getting a bit confused. a and would be better off just dropping straight back into the pocket. We've heard this before. Third and 17 <laughs> for the Aggies. Blitz in trouble, gets it off and almost picked off. Brown was on the run as a heavy blitz by Carlos Polk up the middle, but there is a penalty flag thrown back by the 10. Did Polk plow into him? Uh, he did. I'm not sure if they're calling an intentional grounding or roughing the passer. Got to be honest with you. Looks like intentional grounding. That's a tough one. You got a linebacker in your chin and you're called for intentional grounding when you throw the ball inside the numbers. I haven't seen that happen much. Carlos Polk from that middle linebacker spot is continuing to wreak havoc in this football game. He is healthy now. There's no flag in the play. There was a receiver in the general area. Fourth down. I agree with the call. That was a weak intentional ground. Here's Polk right here. He'll probably go around. I didn't see it. But number 13, the middle linebacker. Yep, one of those little stunts. The offensive line misses it. And there's the throw. I think that's close enough. He quit on the ball. At least it was in the general direction. You can't call that intentional ground. You're quiet. You think it might have been? <laughs> I'll go with it. It was close. It was close. Shane Leckler. Walker back deep. Huskers failed to get a piece of it. And Newcomb with penalty flags flying. Returns it to the 45 yard line. A 42 yard punt with a 13 yard return tacked on. But there is a penalty thrown back at the Nebraska. 34 yard line. That'll be inside the halo. Two yard. Very tough for those gunners coming downfield to stay out of that two yard spot because the punt returner moves at the last Violation second. of the two yard halo violation. Still five yards penalty. First and ten. So Nukem. Tries to ignite the fuse here after uh, receiving a shot for that painful yep. injury and they trot back on the field they'll show so many formations we asked coach Hank Hankowitz about all the alignments that uh, the Aggies face here today and here's what he said well the challenge is, is that they run multiple formations and out of all those formations they have an excellent option game they have their basic running game and they have a tremendous play action passing game and when you try to stop the run you commit people to it and the challenge is, is to stop the play action pass Friend, we kind of handcuffed Coach Hankwitz. We gave him a small board. There's more formations yet. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a big board, there'd have been more of there. It was just for the uh, the one series as Alexander <laughs> breaks for eight yards. Well, the Heisman Trophy race. A lot of folks think it's down to these three for the title. And here's how they're doing today. Joe Hamilton up at Virginia's 10 of 13, one touchdown and one pick. Drew Brees, 15 of 27, no touchdowns with one interception. And Dane still pursuing Ricky Williams with the 77 yards in the right, first half. Right hand. on target. Right on target. I think Drew Brees isn't in person. I think he's the 99 leader. Two, two, two. Second down and the hand to Alexander who battles Ball trying to pick up that first down. Cornelius Anthony tackles him. Just get the feeling here now, Brent. One touchdown by Nebraska is going to open up the floodgates. It does not appear that the offensive line for AM can handle that pressure in this football game. Nebraska takes care of the football and puts one across the goal line. They could have their way in this game pretty easily. Won't be easy against this wrecking crew. First down of 10 inside the 45. Alexander on the toss. Daylight. First down to the 30 yard line. Forcing the secondary to make the stop. Excellent blocking and a 14 yard gain. Remember Turner Gill opened the game by saying we're going to run the misdirection and the option early and in the second half when we get them split out we're going to run the power game right at him. Here comes the power game. The short toss running right at the defensive ends has worked so far in the second half. 
It's Rocky Bernard, their left defensive end out of Baytown, Texas. Shaking up on the plane. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting truck, six, nothing. Richard Rocky Bernard, who walked off under his own power. First down and 10 for Crouch and the Huskers. They come back with the eye back and bullying his way right straight ahead with a nice run is Dan Alexander for 16 more yards and a Nebraska first down. On a gorgeous November Saturday afternoon, the new press box there on the left hand side of your screen. More than 77,000 here today in Nebraska with two field goals leads Texas A&M 6 nothing and driving again with a first down just outside the 15 yard line. Here is Alexander. Penalty flag to the 11 yard line. Penalty flag on the fly. Alexander brought down by Brandon Jennings. I think they got Dominic Rioli that time, the center, holding on that play. Actually, I thought he did a pretty good job. I did have him eyeballed the whole way. He had the nose tackle right on him, Ronnie Edwards, and he was working very hard to get around him and cut off him to that short side of the field. You know, Brent, there there is maybe where we play first down. The finest line in football might be the difference between a good block and holding on the offensive line. <laughs> I mean, you know, what is a good block and one is holding sometimes is very, very hard to determine. First down and 19 for Nebraska after the holding penalty. Probably spotted a foul. That's why it doesn't become first and three like we're so familiar with the NFL. Crouch option, left side, and nothing doing. Jackaroot, uh, what do we hear about Rocky Bernard's injury? Well, the athletic trainers have worked on Rocky and they've retaped his ankle on the outside of his shoe and he is expected to go back into competition. The same cannot be said, however, for the running back, Dante Hall. You know, Brent, he's been nursing an injured ankle. Well, he injured it again in that first half. They don't expect Dante to be back today. Rocky said, cut me, cut me, get me back in there. No, that's something else. That <laughs> He, lost did that, my way. he did that about five or six times, <laughs> didn't he? Yeah. Second down at 19. Good matchup here. Newcomb and Webster. Play fake. Crouch rolls in that direction. Throws in underneath the coverage, and he comes back to one of his tight ends. That one, Aaron Galladay, the freshman from York, Nebraska. So we come down the stretch of the Big 12 Conference. Kansas State will be here next week, unbeaten. Texas leading Oklahoma State. Oklahoma over Missouri. Kansas comes up big against Baylor, lowly Baylor this year. Huh? And Texas Tech beats Iowa State 28-16. Not good news for AM. They need Texas Tech to lose a game. Third course, down. They got to take care of business themselves, too, first. Here it is again. Nice matchup. Newcomb, bottom of your screen. Two, yeah, Wants to come to screen to him. That was that middle screen, and AM absolutely blew it up. Now I see a penalty flag. You know, fly, but Jason Webster jumped in there and just disrupted things. But the penalty flag was thrown by the back judge around the 13 yard line. He was coming in behind the play. Brent, you know, Ro Russ Hoxty, number 55, the guard, did too good of a job blocking his guy. He blocked him right into the screen that time. We're going to pick that up. The pass was behind the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look at that kind of those fire screen right here. There's Newcomb. Here's Hawkscreen. He's going to drive his guy right into where Newcomb's coming. Watch this. Hawkscreen gets him, drives his guy right back into him. They're going to show up in the same picture. See that block? That's how you get. You do too good of a job and you blow up the play that time. Very, very interesting play. A 36-yard field goal attempt. Crouch over there talking to the staff about what disrupted that screen pass and where he threw it. And Josh puts him up with three field goals now. Nebraska nine. Texas A&M nothing. 8.06 left in the third. Timeout. And they have dominated the Aggie offense today. The Aggies' average gain per play is 1.3 yards. They've been able to return only one kickoff. 
That for 23 yards. Hayden Felt has been outstanding about burying his kickoffs in the end zone. He'll try to do it again from the 35-yard line. At the goal line, Bethel Johnson up the middle and well short of the 20-yard line. So the kicking game edge so far going to the Huskers and how about their D Gary well they've been forcing the turnovers three of them two big interceptions a fumble recovery four sacks today and the black shirts have kept this A&M offense at bay plus a little bit in my mind some questionable play calling right there Charlie McBride says I got him going but I'm still nervous it's only nine to nothing and Steve Craigthorpe the offensive coordinator right there for A&M has to find some plays. He needs to throw the intermediate pass. Booker in at safety. And here's the freshman Weber going nowhere as number 21, Mike Brown, the leading tackler on this Nebraska team, eats up the freshman running back from San Bernardino, California. Very interesting about Mike Brown. You know, he's a fourth year senior. That means he played as a true freshman. And he, he says, been quoted as saying, if I had one thing I'd like to do over, I would have liked to have redshirted. He said, you know, I ran down on special teams. I was a backup corner my freshman year. I would have been better served lifting and being just a junior right now. Six tackles and two INTs here today. I'd imagine it better, huh? Yeah. Second down. Here comes McCown. Goes for it all again. Diving reception. Incomplete is the call, and Bumgardner thinks he had it. Well, Bumgardner, Bumgardner does not agree with the call on that far side, and folks, this one was close, real close. Another of those deep plays. Remember, this is the guy that usually turns it around with the big catches. He lays out, he's six foot two, catches the ball. No, that's not a catch. That, that ball hit the ground. Yep. Great effort, great throw, but again, a very low percentage pass. Putting him in third and nine. In trouble and sacked again at the seven yard line. That is the fifth sack. Steve Warren from Springfield, Missouri, the senior ringleader of the Black Shirts. Third down, Nebraska usually keeps a guy right here, a free safety. This time, look, nothing back there. That means they're bringing everybody, man to man, baby. You're a corner, you're a safety, you got him. Cover him all over the field. I'm not giving you any help. Look at the coverage. So Leckler from his own end zone. The Aggies have had horrible field position in this game for much of the last couple of quarters. Newcomb will watch this one sail out of bounds, but the Cornhusker offense will be working with half a field, only a 37 yard punt. And we'll take timeout. You know, this is not our numbers. This is on the field, and these guys can see that. AM across the field is staring at that all game, and it starts to wear on you. You see those minuses? This isn't golf. This is football. That's not good. Toss into round. And Alexander faked it and broke free. Fake into round, and he cruises to the 25 yard line for 20 yards before Cedric Curry pushes him out. See, that's just like a touch to me. Bobby Newcomb didn't touch the ball, but he helped the play. Everybody's out there. Number 12, number 12. Be ready for the reverse. Right now, Bobby Newcomb I think is more of a decoy. That hip is probably a little worse than uh, that everybody realizes. He's not been a go to guy, so you fake it to him. 14 carries for 88 yards. Alexander. The option, Crouch, twist free. Crouch to the 11 and a flag on the tackle. A 14 yard gain and a penalty flag. Remember, forget about the wide receivers. Don't believe the hype. Stop the quarterback. So far, the Aggies have. Coming into that play, nine attempts for 14 yards. He picks up 14 on that play.
personal foul. Face mask on the defense. Attack the distance to the goal. And an automatic first down. So, and with one loss, who knows what's going to happen the rest of the way. There's the face mask penalty. No right question about that. So it is first down and goal from the six-yard line. Alexander, Alexander, touchdown, Nebraska. The first touchdown of the afternoon with 5.50 to go in the third quarter. Dan Alexander, the junior from Wentzville, Missouri, takes it six yards. Well, nobody's defense is good enough to hold up the 41 total yards offense and the field position that they've had to deal with the Aggies all game. It was just a matter of time. Nebraska didn't get cute this time. They just stuffed it into the end zone. No shovel passes, no fire passes. They just stuck it in there the old Nebraska way. Josh Brown adds the extra point. 16 nothing with 550 to go. So Alex Andrews had a good day. He's rushed for better than 90 yards. Pounds across for the game's first touchdown. And now for the Texas A&M Aggies, it is all uphill. Jackaroo. Well, I'm, Brent, I'm down here in the, uh, what would you call this, the student section or actually the parent section, the family section with Susan Crouch. And son's doing a nice job today, but really not the kind of offense you'd like to see. Exactly. <laughs> Two more scores would be nice. Tell me a little bit about this embroidery. You bring different caps to each game. Last week you had the O-line. This week it just says your son's name and number. That's my lucky hat. You gotta wear it. Well, now you know that Penn State got upset today. Is there any talk to what do you think about the fact that maybe Nebraska could get back into the BCS hunt? Uh, one game at a time here at the Crouch House. Um, I don't know. I don't want to look too far ahead. You know what, Brent? She sounds like she's been coached by the coaches. Yeah. <laughs> you know what she just said to you, Jack? She has. Yes, I have. She got the cliches, man. And a uh, couple weeks ago against Texas, that Crouch stood for duck. This week it doesn't. He's running the ball. Just enough to keep him honest. You know, that reverse, that fake reverse was a brilliant call that time. Using Bobby Newcomb, got that drive off, started well. Still short of the 20 yard line. Well, let's check in on Ron Dane, the Wisconsin running back. We send you to John Saunders. John. Brent, last year you had the call of Ricky Williams. Probably the ring leaders. First down and 10. And the Aggies with a short drop there. The fumble and Nebraska incomplete. Yep. Keith Cravers, who had a great football game here, Brent. He's been covering them long. At that time, he came right up. Finally, a short pass, a pass that should have been caught, but that's good defense. Three-step drop, quick slant, Craver reads it and breaks on the football, and that's one you expect to receive to hold on to. That, folks, is a fumble. It's a fumble and a headache. <laughs> He's However, still down there. The old bailout call, <laughs> and uh, they protect themselves, don't they, by calling that incomplete? You see it every week. Take a look at it at regular speed. See if you change your mind. One, two, three. There's the catch. There's the ball. I, I, either way, I think that could. It was one of those pop. He never got his other foot on the ground. All I know is good defense. That's what I do know. Well, tonight, Mother Nature is remarkable. It's getting worse. <laughs> Every time they run a play, the average is going down. Has to be a little tough for AM, especially the fact that they turned down Major Applewhite and Drew Brees to play quarterback here. Second and ten. in the middle and Hardeman slips to the 24 yard line. There's the young man who was shaken up Chris Cole. 
Down and three. Option pitch. Nothing doing. And the Nebraska defense comes up again with Aaron Wills making the play for Max Blackford. When you're the option quarterback, you're responsible for the pitch man, the quarterback man right there. If he doesn't tackle you, he stops the quarterback, and then he stops the pitch. The quarterback did not do a good job. He's still standing there. So the sixth punt of the game for Shane Leckler. The two deep men deployed by Nebraska. Big hop to Walker. Fields it and got an out. Shakes one tackler out to the 36 yard line. A return of six yards off a 48 yard punt by Leckler. And a reminder that conclusion of the game will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university general scholarship fund at the beginning of this year. Chevrolet also donates two $1,000 high school scholarships. I do want to correct myself on Major Apple. He originally committed AM and and then decommitted to Texas. Drew Brees was the guy they said no to. Doesn't matter. They playing with the guy they got today. Nebraska leading 16 nothing with 359 to go in the third quarter and a first down from the 36 yard line. A pound back with the eye back and now it looks like the Aggie defense may be wearing down a little bit as Danny Alexander for 12 more yards here today and he breaks 100 16 carries for 106 yards for Dan Alexander. Brent, the Nebraska running attack coming into this game is averaging just 244. Now, you know, that might be good by some standards, but you look back for Nebraska, they've averaged all but in the last 27, 23 years, only under 300 three times. Crouch changes it up. He's got a blitz look, the man to man on me coming in the slot. He's going to the out. Is Alexander again, and Alexander battles his way close to midfield and. Jason Glenn, Aaron Glenn's brother, getting him out of bounds. Jack Abruz. Well, Brent Alexander suffered from a case of fumbleitis, and what we call stumbleitis early in the season. So they took a look at the films, and they changed the way he runs. He said he wasn't keeping his legs in front of his body. So now he tries to pump his knees up above the ball, keep them in front of him. It says it gives himself better balance and better power. Nobody likes to tackle those knees. Those are big legs. So Texas continues driving, hoping for a piece of the Big 12 title. And there's a completion to Newcomb. Just short of the 40-yard line. That'll be marked at about the 41-yard line. It'll be close to a first down. Nebraska's only loss this season came a couple of weeks back down in Austin at the hands of the Longhorns. First down and uh, next week, Sole Chan, the Cornhuskers host Kansas State. And of course, on Thanksgiving weekend, Texas A&M will host Texas. So a lot of big games left in the Big 12. A lot of things still to be decided in this college football season. Today, a stunner with Penn State. Losing to Minnesota, Crouch off a play fake, guns it down the middle, Newcomb overthrew him. He had Curry broken. <clears throat> he was alone. And uh, what about Purdue, John Saunders? How are they doing against Wisconsin, my friend? Well, Brent, it showed you Ron Dane, and this really is a Heisman matchup here. Drew Brees 
perfect pass to Tim Stratton. The only place he can get it and not have it knocked down. Ties the game at 14 apiece. Brent, we'll keep you up to date. Back to you. All right. And I see that note down there that Dane now to 194. A lot of folks down at Texas keeping track of that race to see if he can surpass Ricky Williams. Good fake by Crouch. Comes to the boundary. Still got it. And Jamison brings him down at the 22 yard line. And now they are having success, it seems, Gary, running against the right side of the Aggie defense. Well, I, I think the power game that Dan Alexander came out in the second half with, and you may just be right, this defense for AM has to be wearing down. Going left, they got that wing option game going right there. It's the belly option. You bring the guard around, and then a wide receiver. It's Matt Davison doing a good job blocking. And look at Sean Applegate stays right with the quarterback the whole time. And look who else was blocking number 12. Followed by the David Duke. Alexander batters right straight ahead behind the left side of the offensive line. Cornelius Anthony no territory. Mike Hankwins and AM use a lot of subs. But this type of game, there's never enough subs. You, you only have 46 yards in total offense. You don't have enough guys behind you to put in the game. No matter who you put taking this pounding, it's going to eventually wear down. Nuka back on the field. They will slot him to the right. Davison is outside of him. And what looks like they could pass out of this formation, but they're going to bring the option instead. And late pitch now, and it's Alexander battling. He fumbled. fumbled out of bounds, however. Nebraska retains yeah. possession as he fumbles out of bounds. Ball was jarred loose well, inside the five yard line here. And Glenn is saying it went in the end zone, it should be coming out. But, it should uh, be a touchback. He fumbled it out of the end zone. If he didn't step out of bounds, it's going to be a touchback. If the ball was fumbled into exactly. the end zone. It Gary. went right through. It went right through the end zone. There's the pitch right there. Let's see if his right foot doesn't step out. You got it exactly right. His right foot does not go out. The ball goes beyond the cone. That's a touchback. And coming out on the 20. Boy, what a big play. Unbelievable. I mean, that's almost a walk in. And they end up at least the worst that's going to be his first in goal. And Alexander, who had trouble as Jack Aroot talked about holding on to the football, got out of balance right there and coughed the ball up. I think we should give Gary Danielson an attaboy for knowing the rules. <laughs> First down and 10. Experience. <laughs> Never First happened to experience. you, though, did it, partner? All right, the Aggies, and they need some offense. Rush five. Intercepted. Picked off by Ralph Brown. 15, 10. Out of bounds inside the five. About where they would have been if Alexander hadn't fumbled. He threw it right to Ralph Brown. Number 56, who's been injured his first game back, put pressure on McCowan just as he let the ball go. Let's see if that threw off the pass. Steps into the throw. There you see it. Let's it go pretty cleanly. The receiver never even looked over the ball. It almost hit him in the head. The receiver wasn't ready for it, and that's a gift interception for Nebraska. The receiver and the quarterback not on the same page. Watch this. The ball, he's down there flocking, and he ducks from the football. Euler and Buckhalter now in the backfield along with Miller. And Crouch walking. Touchdown, Nebraska. Mother watching from stands here as her son takes it in on the option. Josh Brown adds the extra point. 23 0. So the defense keeps Nebraska in the game, and then in the second half, the offense starts to do its share here in Lincoln. Belly option to the outside, same formation they ran the tailback in, and the fullback Willie Miller fumbled earlier. Just one stop by the linebacker. If he just hesitates and looks for that fullback, you'll never catch the quarterback on that option. Brent, you know, R.C. Slocum told me that 
He thinks 50 to 70 percent of the schools in the country would love to run this offense, but they don't because they don't think they can recruit well enough to get the players to compete with Nebraska. The system and the tradition allows Nebraska to run the option and still get a good enough players to compete. Well, it was Ralph Brown and Taylor breaking away from this pass by McCown. You watch it beautifully from the end zone, and he threw behind the wide receiver right into Ralph Brown's hands, and the corner takes it back inside the five-yard line. McCown now struggling. He's 0 for his last seven. Two of the seven have been intercepted by Nebraska's defense and Eric Crouch in the offense made him pay that time. Brent it was slightly behind if you look at AM's possessions today slightly behind his right ear. I mean he let that ball go maybe a bit early but that's that pass rush that you start to feel with that mental clock in your head. Wow, is Johnson again. Aggies though save it. <laughs> it is a rough afternoon for Texas A&M. Welcome to Lincoln Nebraska. The Cornhuskers come alive in the second half and they're shutting out Texas A&M 23 to nothing. And one stat to keep in mind in this half the Aggies have zero offensive yards. That's as in Jose. And for the game they're averaging only one yard of play against this Nebraska defense with four down linemen. McCown diving reception is good that time by Bumgarner who makes a circus catch on a throw from his roommate for 14 yards. An offense that went earlier this year nine consecutive quarters without scoring a touchdown has been searching and groping to find a play that will even work against this Nebraska defense today. First down and 10. Shotgun. The offensive line of the Aggies holding hands. Tombs. Powerful run. Close to a 10-yard gain. I want to go back on the offensive lineman holding hands because I'm even seeing it around the NFL when you're in a noisy arena and now Taylor appears to be shaken up and uh, the Aggies can ill afford to start losing some of their star players. They'll rush out now and tend to him. But what happens when it gets so noisy down there the tackles especially can't hear the snap count. So as soon as the guard drops his hand that's when the tackle knows that it's uh, it's time to go to work. You, you can, can see, see the guards right and the there, tackles yep. there. And of course last week didn't help my buddy. Dick Vermeil, they were <laughs> holding hands, and Javon Curse was uh, was still beating everybody. He, the technique works, but the advantage goes to the defense because the defensive lineman can now look at the ball, and it takes two guys: the offensive guard to react to the ball, and then the tackle to react to the guard. So you are a half step behind when that happens. Gary, when you're down there, is it that hard? For a no, tackle. Now I can see the wide receivers, but I'm kind of surprised about tackles not here. Being absolutely. Right here. You know, there are some quarterbacks, though, like Doug Flutie does not like to go silent count because he feels the defense has too much of an advantage uh, uh, timing it up. And you'll see him even sneak up to the line of scrimmage and yell it out and then back up at the snap. I think that's something a lot of colleges should try to start doing because you're giving the defense a big advantage with that silent count. Chris Taylor under his own power. And Hopefully he'll be able to play here for the rest of the game. We've got 20 seconds left in the third quarter. Nebraska now dominating. And from several standpoints for Coach Solich, this is his team's most impressive performance of the season. It's a bit of a payback, if you will. Texas A&M pounded Nebraska at home last year. McCown to throw. Had good protection. Incomplete. And Ralph Brown all over. The wide receiver that time. Get I, that out of my house. You Mr. bet. Brown says. Probably the sixth or seventh deep ball that has been thrown by AM, trying now desperately to find a cheap touchdown, doing anything. And so far, Ralph Brown and Keo Craver have been perfect in the deep coverage. Aggies have thrown for 57 total yards. They have had two interceptions. They've been sacked for 38 yards and losses here today. On third and short. Toons hole closes. Still 
pounding ahead, and that is the Jamar Toombs that we expected to see all season. 12 yards, Toombs for a first down. We've come to the end of the third quarter, and we'll return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The black shirts have their own <laughs> dance car over there. Uh, I'm going to keep out of the women in the program thing. Jared Redmond wishes he would have. <laughs> <laughs> First down and 10. Short drop McCown. Dropped. Craver was covering Dwayne Goins, the wide receiver on that play. A little unlucky that time for Randy McCown. He, he threw right. Baumgartner beat his guy cleanly on the left side. And to the right side, a great jam. He had no one to throw the ball to. Sometimes you just got to guess. And when you guess and you throw deep, you're five for 20. Will AM throw on every down? No, I think they have to. They're still in eye formation. And that'll force these guys, nine of them, right there in the box. Got it off complete, short of the first down. Now he slips a tackle and he steps out. Very close to the uh, the first down that time. That was Bethel Johnson. Made a nice run after the catch. If you're not able to beat bump and run coverage anymore in any level of football, it's almost going into high school football, your offense won't work because they'll just get more and more guys near the line of scrimmage. And today, the corners, Keo Craver and Ralph Brown, have taken the wide receivers out of the Texas A&M passing game and forced them to go deep. Every time they try to throw short, They've been jamming them at the line of scrimmage. You know, coaches don't want anybody using alibis, but there are two teams that I thought were overrated coming into the season. I'm going to tell you why. One of them is Ohio State, and the other is Texas A&M. I'm going to tell you why I thought they were overrated. They lost too many good players, and in some cases, great players. And in A&M's case, one of the finest college football players I ever watched in that win to the NFL. Seven players from last year's team made NFL rosters. Now I, I go back to what those coaches were saying back in August and July and the magazines are coming out and they're talking their teams up. I understand right. that. But I got to tell you in RC's case and in John Cooper's didn't work. They should have told the truth. <laughs> hey, well, and just we're going to miss these guys a ton. Just to give you an example that the experts were right and wrong at the same time. They picked A&M to win the Big South 12 Big 12 South Conference but did not pick one player as a preseason all Big 12 player. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, there's the Big 12, how it, how it finished today. Kansas might be a little bit better. You know, uh, folks here in Lincoln were really down about that game. Kansas had a, had a lead on uh, Nebraska in the early going. They might be better than we think. And uh, let's check our standings after this. And of course, the big one as far as K-State and Nebraska are concerned now will be right here in Lincoln next week. This would knock Texas A&M from any chance to defend its title as the South Division winner. This is Toombs pounding ahead for a uh, first down. Now the Pac-10. Who will win the Pac-10? Can anybody win it? Let's send you to John Saunders in New York. John? Brent, we might be able to put together a team at the ABC and win this thing. It's wide open. Arizona, Washington here. Ortiz Jenkins, who's actually played wide receiver a lot this year because he's number two of the quarterback ranks. To Marvin Brown, 55 yards, 19 to 17. Now Washington's lead is down to just two. Brent. Hey, John, tell your friends in the studio, I want to see the end of the classic. I want to see Cat Thief win it under Pat Day, a big college football fan. Sack number six. For Nebraska, you know how the studio, you know, they're just they're, going they crazy on me now. Right now, they're looking at what monitor's that on, Brent? <laughs> <laughs> well, Ed. I'm the villain back in New York right now. Horse racing, what's he talking about? And Steve Warren was the villain on that play inside again as he just did an arm around, came back, and before Randy McCown could get his feet set that time, another sack. His defense, that Major Applewhite tore up in the second half, looks like they're settled down in what well, makes you think even more of that Texas Longhorn team. Yeah. They're a good football team, but I think Nebraska, if they, win, if they do their job, they get a chance maybe to meet them again. Second down in 19, and uh, that is far short of the first down. And is that the kind of underneath pass you wanted in the first half? Yeah, but it's getting a little easier right now. Nebraska now, looking at the scoreboard, is willing to tra trade a little bit of yardage for time. 
and you look, you say, hey, it's not as tight a coverage, but you're right. They needed to throw the comebacks, the outs, the quick slants, and no, not all those deep balls. One Heisman Trophy is at stake right now. Joe Hamilton and Georgia Tech have just fallen behind Virginia. I just caught that score, 38-31. Lots of time left in the uh, ACC in that game. Third down and seven. Slot over to the left. Down the sideline, Bump Gardner, Crater there, intercepted. Picked it off at the three yard line. Keo Craver, the sophomore from Harlington, Texas. And doesn't a young Texas defensive back love to pick off one thrown by an Aggie? Can't do it any better than this. Randy McCown comes back, knows he's got bump and run to the outside. Free safety in the middle of the field, throws it up. Look at that technique. Inside, he's been able to keep his guy at bay. Turns around. When you're in phase, when you're next to him, you can turn around and look for the ball. And he had perfect technique. All Nebraska. Timeout. So after the fourth interception thrown by Texas A&M, Eric Crouch brings the offense up. Four interceptions, a fumble, and two block field goals. You're not going to be Baylor doing that, let alone Nebraska. The Cornhuskers now will go to work on the clock. And a break free with Crouch again. Running to the 20-yard line for a first down for Nebraska. So Dan Alexander and Eric Crouch doing a very effective job here of running the ball against the Aggies. That's 18 more yards. He's rushed for 66 yards. Hard to keep your patience if you're AM. Game keeps going against you. You're tired of reading your keys. You know it's getting shoved down your face a little bit now. And your offense isn't helping you at all. It's not like Nebraska's going to ease up either. Buckhalter, now the running back. Play fake. Crouch a wobbler, incomplete intended for his tight end, Aaron Galladay. Let us check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Brent, what's happening right now has got to be sweet for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Remember last year, the loss to the Texas A&M team started a losing streak that literally knocked them out of any hope for the Big 12 championship. It was those losses and their failure to come from behind and seal the deal in the final minutes of a game that got the team together and they came up with a new theme for 1999. It's very simple, relentless all the way to victory. I'll tell you what the problem is, Jack. No reveille. <laughs> I'm telling you what, man. That's that's leaving this Aggie team shorthanded when you can't bring the dog with you. That's unbelievable. You need more than the dog. 1306. We'll take a timeout here in Lincoln. Stewart, can I? Gary Danielson, I'm Brent Musburger. 1306 remaining here. And the Cornhuskers pitching a shutout at Texas A&M. Working on the clock now. Eric Crouch, the other quarterback from Omaha. The option keeps it. Drives straight ahead and then breaks free. Midfield. Foot race. One man to beat. Davison couldn't knock him down. But Crouch makes it to the 17-yard line with Jason Webster saving the touchdown. A 63-yard run for Eric Crouch, and no one likes it better than Mom. That's how you pile up your yard. Turner Gill said it at the beginning of the game. We're going to misdirect early, and then in the second half, we're going to come back and pound on him, and then our option game will be there. Eric Crouch, if you miss him at the line of scrimmage, he's got the speed to make you pay. AM had a defense outside that time, but the cutback by the quarterback made him pay big time. 14 carries, 129 yards for the quarterback. Buckhalter is his eye back. Buckhalter, right side again to the 14 yard line. Now, Jack, I, I've been saying all day, why isn't Reveille here with Texas A&M, my friend? Well, Brent, right here is where Reveille should be. <laughs> but since Bob Devaney was the head coach here, one of the things that he did is not allow live mascots. In fact, when Nebraska played Army, they wanted to bring the mule, and he said, hey, no mule comes out of this Memorial Stadium turf. So Reveille's not here. If I can help, maybe. Poof, poof, poof. <laughs> That's one of my great memories of college football. Jack Here's the big, it's the buck out there. And 
uh, Buckhalter. Well, we do have a Great Dane anyway. Let's go to John Saunders. What's happening to the Great Dane? Friend, last time you were talking about horses, but surely you'd rather watch the run like this by Ron Dane. Moves to his right, spots the hole, and he's gone. 41 yards in the touchdown, 186 yards in the day, and 135 more yards, and he will pass Ricky Williams, number one all time. Brent. Yeah, he's closing in, John. You know, early in the year, I didn't think he had a chance, but now I'm beginning to believe. Here's third down. Crouch again. Slip sideline. First down, first and goal, Nebraska. It's amazing. You watch a football game, everyone should be getting tired. I mean, the Nebraska offense has been out there as many times. Eric Crouch has taken hits the whole game, but he seems to be going at twice the speed as that A&M defense. The A&M defense now, their defenders have their hands on their hips. They're starting to get tired. You can see it in their eyes. This game was over as soon as Nebraska put that touchdown into the end zone. You look at that if you're an offense, you get their hands on their hips, you know you've got them going the wrong direction. They stack the eye. Buckhalter is the eye back. Buckhalter, touchdown, Nebraska. Well, I guess the talk shows are going to give Frank Solich some credit for calling some good plays this week, right? Yeah, exactly. Same calls, same calls. Early in this football game, the turnovers looked like it was going to keep up be enough. AM didn't take advantage of it, and from there, it was all over. Second half yardage, Brent, unbelievable. Isn't it? That's 232 yards rushing for Nebraska, Corey. 15 yards. <laughs> It's hard for me to even talk to that type of the AM defense. You have to give them credit for the way they held in there in the first half, but you knew sooner or later the dam was going to break. Nebraska came in favored by a couple of touchdowns. They're up 30 points. They are breezy here today. And Buckholder, who has been backing up Dan Alexander as the eye back, just pounds it across for six more. Timeout. Party's beginning in Lincoln. They did not want to lose another game to a Texas school. Let me tell you, folks, they were uneasy fans here in Lincoln this week, but not right now. And they may have a chance, as we talked before, of facing a Texas school again in the Big 12 championship. And Which we played they, in. They would love that, wouldn't they? Absolutely. And Antonio, here comes the kickoff. Johnson. They've defended him well, and they do again short of the 20, but there is a penalty flag thrown. Back judge came running into the action and fired the flag. How are the emotions ebb and flow for these fellows who coach these teams, huh? Well, our Burger King play of the day, and let's send you to John Saunders in New York. Thanks a lot, guys. Time now for the Burger King play of the day. Penn State, the number two team in the nation on their heels because Billy Cockrum here tosses it up, tipped by Ron Johnson. Arlen Bruce, great reception inside the 15. It sets up Dan Nystrom, 32 yards for the winning field goal, and number two, Penn State loses. Well, the Aggies backed up again, and the crowd roaring. There's a team averaging less than two yards of play here this afternoon and being shut out for 10.56. Two. You know your defense is doing a good job when the three leading receivers for AM, Taylor, the leading receiver has no catches. Hodge has one and Cole two. Three catches total for the top three receivers. Yeah, that's, that's something. McBride's defense. Ralph Brown. 
What could he possibly be saying is wrong with that last drive? <laughs> you're always coaching and you're always thinking about the next series, the next game if you're a quarterback. And I believe McCown's going to use a timeout here. So we'll take a break and come back to Lincoln. for his life. Check in with Jack. Well, Brent, you know we're getting close to Christmas, not too early if you're a Nebraska fan. The traditional chapeau, they're available, but here's the one I've got for you and Gary. Right here. <laughs> Who needs a cheese head? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you look like a corn husky down there, kid. I'll tell you that, Herbie be proud of you. You're barking and now you're singing. You got 9.45 of Phil coming at you, my friend. Third down now. So we'll take another break here. What kept me going was the A lot of football. You got to go back to 1988 before you can find Texas A&M being shut out. On third down, Toons the receiver, and a first down for the Aggies. But the biggest part of this game, the turnovers forced by Nebraska, the four interceptions. Started out early, tip pass by Julius Jackson. Deep pass right before the end of the half when the free safety came. Receiver and quarterback not on the same page, and then a desperation one when Keo Craver had the great coverage. The secondary for Nebraska has probably played their best game. Two for Mike Brown, one for Craver, one for Ralph. And still without a helmet. And a penalty flag. Maybe it was ripped off by somebody. And holding going to bring it back. Nine minutes remain here in Lincoln. And the Cornhuskers are going to start preparing for Kansas State as soon as that clock runs down. The showdown will be right here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. You know, Brent, in a way, you start preparing right now for Kansas State because you're up by so much, you start to show some tendencies that you might want Kansas State to see on film right now. So if you're thinking ahead, you can call some formations or plays that Kansas State will have to practice, and you can take advantage of a big lead like this. Eric Crouch, who played very well here today, he rushed for 137 yards, passed for another 95, and their rover, Mike Brown, was outstanding, not only with his two interceptions, but also his tackling ability back as the rover back. Now facing a first down and 22. Complete. Bumgarner down at the 22 yard line. And Virginia now pouring it on Joe Hamilton and Georgia Tech. And that kind of a loss will hurt Hamilton's Heisman Trophy chances as Ron Dane moves in on that record now up in the Big Ten. One thing college football understands now, I think even more than ever, chances of going undefeated, you're, you're almost lucky to go undefeated nowadays. And that makes you know, teams like Kansas State and Virginia Tech back in the picture because it's almost like flipping pennies. you got to have 100 of them to make 10 of them come up heads 10 times in a row. Town, pump fake left side, got a man wide open, and Brown was there. The pass Mike Brown went hard, rolling over from his safety spot that time. An ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by the Ford Motor Company. It's time to wave hello. Ameritrade, believe in yourself. Budweiser, delivered fresh daily from our local brewery near you. And Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping you live a safer, more secure life. Mike Brown was in there. There he is right there. Mike Brown was in the play because of the pump fake. That allowed him time to get over there. McCown in trouble. Shaw was coming hard. Brian Shaw, the senior linebacker, number 46 for Coach Mack. 
closing in, and that is the seventh sack of this game. Nebraska came into this game with 28 sacks, seven more, and they're on pace to a normal Nebraska team. You know, Bobby Newcomb can't be too bad. He's in the game right here still on the punt team. There's Lucky. Looking for daylight. To the 35-yard line, a 14-yard return for Newcomb, who now has seven touches, but it was a punt return last week that ignited Nebraska, losing to Kansas. He slipped the gunner and then broke free for his first of two touchdowns. He caught the winning pass from Eric Crouch, and Nebraska rallied to beat Kansas. Jeff Perino checks in at quarterback, so he'll finish this one up. For Nebraska, Eric Crouch's work is done here today. And they will go to work with the fullback Tyrone Euler, Jack Root. You know, it's okay with Jeff Perino if he serves as kind of the mop-up role today because he says it feeds his football hunger. You gotta have to remember, Brent, that he returned to this Husker squad after three nurse, knee surgeries and spending the 97 season in the stands as a GA in the press box. So uh, for Perino, this is all about the love of the game, being a Husker football player and calling the shots in a mop-up role. That is Durango, Colorado. Great Western man. Young man from Durango, now at the helm. Here's the toss. Alexander to the 30-yard line. and. Uh, you know, Newcomb today, as far as his touches are concerned, has that, Gary? Yeah, hasn't got the ball a lot, but I think early in the game, the play calling from Frank Solich gave notice to AM that they were going to have to account for Bobby Newcomb the whole game. And one of the big plays was not a touch, the fake reverse. Third and five. Now Diedrich is in as the high back, young man from Canada, and he is smacked at the 31. You know, players like to touch the, the ball a lot, so we, we asked Bobby Newcomb, uh, how many times do you need to touch the ball during a Nebraska game? Here's what he said. I don't think I can give you the exact number, but uh, I'd say uh, however many times it takes to win the game. That's good enough, Bobby. Short and to the point. Now, this is not the same type of touches that you can get Peter Wark. This, this offense is not designed that way. There still is plays that are going to be run out of the option, but I think they've served notice to Kansas State that Bobby Newcomb's going to be on the field. You know, Brent, interesting as we watch Jeff Reno right here, what do you do if you're Nebraska? Oh, Day great. What do you do if you're Nebraska if Eric Crouch goes down there? The importance of Bobby Newcomb as a wingback has made this offense better. He is really the backup quarterback. Well, I think Turner Gill and uh, Coach Solich, at least unless they've changed their mind, Still. if it's just a temporary replacement, it'll be Perino. And if they have to go long haul, they've always said that Newcomb would be moved back yeah. to quarterback. But it will change their game. I mean, Nebraska has changed because of Newcomb and his abilities as a flanker. But in a key game against Kansas State, you're in the third quarter or something, Newcomb hasn't even warmed up in, in, in pregame, and you put him into quarterback, that'll be a different offense. There's Perino. He keeps it. Bangs inside the 20-yard line. So he's trying to make an impression on the coaching staff here. Madison making the stop. And you put this in the W column for Nebraska, and they're four and a half minutes away. Then you realize that this is a team led by Eric Crouch that will be hosting Kansas State here next Saturday in a game that uh, in all likelihood will uh, yeah. settle and, the title. And Brent, you know, the weather is a nice weather game today for Kansas State. When the weather shifts colder, the advantage goes to Nebraska. They're more of a ground team. Here's Diedrich, breaks off a tackle. Young man inside the 10-yard line, showing us a little burst. Darren Diedrich out of Scarborough, Ontario. So there we are. 
Kansas State will come in here at 6-0, remaining games at Nebraska and against Missouri. With this in the W column would make the Cornhuskers 5-1 and one in their remaining games after Kansas State, Colorado, and then Colorado down there at 4-2 and two having lost today. So the big one in the Big 12 North next Saturday right here in Lincoln. Tickets are not available. <laughs> and there'll be no cakewalk going to play Colorado. Gary Barnett's got that team playing better football. Diedrich again. So the eye back of the future to the two yard line. You know, Diedrich was one of those running backs who was highly recruited by the Michigan program. And uh, when you think of Michigan's need for a backup running back for the A train, he's four of 21. That little stat courtesy of, uh, of our spotter, Brian Mobelson, who's very happy that Michigan is back in the hunt for a possible trip to the Rose Bowl. We'll see about that next week. Roger Riley on the numbers over there. Thanks, lads. Bob Goodrich down in the truck and Drew Esikoff, our director today, doing their usual outstanding job. Second down and goal. Let's see if they get the young man a touchdown. Yes! Airborne! Hello, future. Looks like he's got some speed, too. Yes, sir. Interesting why Frank Solich said he wasn't playing early for this team. Does not have great hands yet catching the pitch. Very interesting, a tailback, an eye back for Nebraska not playing because of his hands. That's how much you go if you're a coach to think. Takes off at about the three and a half yard line and jumps right into the end zone. Yeah, we watched him sparkle out here in practice yep. the other day, and uh, he's a good-looking youngin. At a, at a good fourth quarter, a week ago against Kansas State, had a nice run. Brown adds the extra point. Let me remind you again of two good primetime games. If you've got uh, some... State kind of got the focus of Nebraska into that football game. I disagree with you on the special teams. You thought Nebraska controlled it? Well, two block field goals. I said two you know, block field goals. I thought the punting kept them in the game. But yeah, the turnover is good. Yeah, okay. you know, the turnovers yeah. just destroyed the game. You're right. You're right. Hey, Gary, we also want to thank a couple of SIDs who do outstanding work. Chris Anderson, of course, here in Nebraska is so helpful. And then Alan Cannon, AC as we call him down Texas A&M way. He's a... Uh, He's one of the best in the business, isn't he? And uh, those fellows give us, and in Chris's case, those ladies and gentlemen give us uh, the best of information. And you know, while you were down at Texas A&M watching practice, she picked up the dinner check the other Oh, night. So very that's, good, right? That's a double bonus. Nebraska howdy, huh? Low kickoff. Going to go out of bounds. This will be a penalty. So time permitting, the thrifty car rental Post game report, and uh, we're about 20 minutes before. The uh, so who knows what's going to happen? Absolutely. Next. I think everybody who's in the top 10 of the BCS has a shot right now. I mean, who, who knows who's going to? I mean, you know that Miami, Florida going in there to Virginia Tech. Now the pressure's on the Virginia Tech, and they've never had the spotlight on them in this type of situation. You remember Kansas State last year? Mm -hmm. they, they couldn't close it. They could not close the sale. You're exactly right. That's well put. Hardeman, the ball carrier, and uh, they jump on him with 248. I'm sure that the one thing the Aggie coaching staff would like to be, I don't know if they can, but they would love to avoid a shutout in here. All that kind of thing. See if we've got time here to work our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game in here. We talked about the punter. Gary mentioned him. Shane Leckler for Texas A&M. Usually you're in trouble if your punter's your MVP. Mike Brown for Nebraska. Two interceptions, two forced fumbles, nine tackles, one breakup. So what a day for Mike Brown. Incomplete on the second down. And you know, in recognition of their fine effort, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university general scholarship fund at the beginning of this year. Chevrolet will also donate $1,000 to two high schools. AM still has that big game Thanksgiving weekend against Texas. Remember, Last year, Texas kind of spoiled it for AM, beating them in that game with Mickey Williams, and now they have a chance to, they, they're going to have to find some more offense. Though. This Texas defense, not much worse than this Nebraska defense. Same level type defense. On third and nine, snaps it off to midfield. So that will 
Give Texas A&M a first down after a 17 yard gain. And Leroy Hodge. There's the Aggies schedule going into Missouri and then they play Texas. And of course that Texas Texas A&M game yep. will be on uh, ABC early Friday morning game. Brent Nebraska's excuse me Brent Nebraska's given up 99 points. 35 of them have come in blowouts in the fourth quarter against the backups and the backups are in right now. Incomplete over through Cole. Well, 93 consecutive games. And today they had that last one up there with 332 yards rushing. They really started to move the ball on the ground in the second half. You know, they? Brent, you have to go back all the way to 1976 to find a Nebraska team that has averaged less yards on the season per game than this version of the Nebraska team. 1976, they did a different style there. Vince Ferragamo was their quarterback that day. Vince Ferragamo came from California, yep. transferred. You better wind up with the Los Angeles Rams. Hard to down at the 45 yards. Speaking of the Rams, how about the Detroit Lions back in your hometown against the St. Louis Rams? I, I, I really think it's going to be a tough game for the Rams. It's one of those logical losses, I think, in the NFL. The teams are so easy. Even, excuse me. Can you imagine that those two teams are division no. leaders? How about the FDA game? Yeah. <laughs> Better be ready. My friend Vermeil got that team fired back up there, Gary. Third down. Bobby Newcomb, Eric Crouch, competed so hard to be the starting quarterback. I think both guys are better off the way it is right now. McCown going to be sacked again. That's number eight. And that one by Justin Smith. So Texas controlling its destiny at five and one. Went out and they will make it to San Antonio and it's going to come down pretty much to this game here next week. Kansas State's in the same situation as Texas. Went out and they will go to San Antonio. Final 30 seconds and the Aggies about to be shut out for the first time since 1988. Where Booms one was going for some distance that time and it broke the plane and it'll come out stopping the clock with 12 seconds to go on that 55 yard punt by Shane Leckler. Nebraska survived three turnovers. I think if you'd have told Frank Solik today that he was going to turn the ball three turnovers against his defense, he might have been a little bit nervous, but as you say, 300 yards rushing solves a lot of problems. I, I suspect uh, Nebraska will jump up pretty well in the polls. They still got an opportunity against Kansas State. I think uh, they get very, very interesting towards the end of this season, and that championship game might help them also an extra game. So congratulations goes to Frank Solich and the Nebraska Cornhuskers as they wrap up a win over Texas A&M, a team that beat them badly last year. So sweet for Frank and the Cornhuskers now. Our final score, Nebraska 37, Texas A&M nothing for Jack Aroot. Gary Danielson, I'm Brent Musburger. Stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. So long, everybody.